You are listening to 88.3 FM WXOU. I am Jamie Starr here with a uh, living legend, pretty much. This is Lori <laughs> Hernandez from the 2016 Rio Olympics and season 23 of Dancing with the Stars. Hi, Lori. Hello. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for being here. I'm so excited to have you here and hanging out with us tonight. I'm super happy to be here. I've met a lot of really cool people today. I'm very happy that you were <laughs> able to explore our university and meet some really cool people. <laughs> cool. So I kind of want to start with your gymnastics portion of your career. And when it comes to gymnastics, a lot of kids do it recreationally and they do it, you know, just for, you know, exercise and mm-hmm. get in, and to get out of the house and make new friends and things like that. But I wanted to, kn- to know, when did you decide you wanted to take the pro route and were the Olympics always on your horizon? So, so I started gymnastics at five um, and it was it truly was just to make some friends and to have a really safe place to flip around because I was doing it on my mom's bed a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, that community was really important and I didn't go into it thinking that I wanted to go to the Olympics, which I also think was important. Mm-hmm. I would say I was around nine years old when I realized that that was the route I wanted to head towards. Um, and then it wasn't until I was 15 or 16 that I actually genuinely was like, wow, this is a possibility. We're there. Yeah, like yeah. this, this could work out. Um, and then I turned professional or, you know, there's a lot of different rules now, but back then I, I turned professional and signed with an agent. I'd verbally committed to a college for a scholarship and I, I gave that up so I could go pro and do different things like ads or be on screen or whatever that looks like. And some pretty neat things have come from it. So I'm glad I did that. That's awesome. When you're, I don't know if performing is the right word to use, um, how do you avoid, or how did you, when you were at the Olympics, avoid the pressure of pretty much the whole world watching you? Honestly, once I accepted that I could not avoid it, everything was a lot easier. <laughs> I was trying to move away from it and ignore it and pretend like it didn't exist, and that was just not fair to my brain or my body because it was there. Um, it, it absolutely was there. And even if I was pretending like I wasn't feeling it, it would show up at practice. So to say, you know what, there's a lot of pressure happening right now. This is nerve-wracking, and it's going to be fine. That was that was really yeah. helpful. <laughs> what are some things that sort of mo- or what motivated you to like while you were at the Olympics? Were like the people, any music, any mm. like people or anything just in general that motivated you during your time at the Olympics? Honestly, the team was a huge motivator. I actually had like a small tear in my ab while I was competing, wow. so that was really uncomfortable. Didn't like that, bestie. Um, <laughs> But at the end of the day, they were just super supportive, and that was important. You need a support system when you're in such a high-pressure environment, especially when you're 16 and you don't really know what you're doing. Yeah. (laughs) So the team was really for that. Yeah, for sure. So I got to ask you about Dancing with the Stars because on a personal note, I have a serious obsession with that show, and I've watched every season for as long as I can remember. I remember when my sister was first born, my mom would, like, hold her as an infant, and I'd be, like, three years old sitting and watching the show. As a kid, side note. Love that. I'm so I'm dedicated. I've seen the tour many times and <laughs> uh, I'm I don't mess around when it comes to that show. So in it and I did watch you and I did I will say my favorite performance of yours was the Michael Jackson um, Oh, that was a good one. Uh, jazz routine. That was a fun and one. I loved your freestyle as well. Thank Those were you. like my two like absolute favorite routines. Thank from you so you. much. So in addition to winning, what was like a highlight of being on Dancing with the Stars? I'd say Broadway Week. Uh, Idina Menzel guest judging as oh, someone who's a huge yeah. Broadway fan. Elfie. And just, oh my Maureen. Gosh. Elfie. <laughs> just listen to me. <laughs> Over the moon. Just say you're sorry. <laughs> oh, I could go off on a tangent. Yeah, so could I. Oh my God. I, I, I remember being so nervous and, and Val was laughing because of all the guest judges that we had, that was the one that I was freaking out over. Um, but being able to do Chicago and to do some kind of oh Broadway yeah, theme, Tango. yeah, that was, it was like I was in like a, my own little Broadway, mm-hmm. you know, play for half a second. Mm-hmm. It, it was really, really a special moment. Yeah. You got to play Velma Kelly for a little yeah. bit in Salt Block Tango, which was awesome. It was terrifying. I had a great time. <laughs> yeah. But you kicked butt in that routine too. Thanks. That's my favorite one. Oh, for sure. What were your favorite your other favorite routines from the show? Ooh, other favorites? I would go ahead and say the Michael Jackson one was a huge one, just because rehearsing for that was really strenuous. It was quite tiring. Lots of people involved, props involved. Yeah. Like, I remember the dancers learning how to move the bench over and then lock it. So if I stood on it, it would move and then mm-hmm. unlock it. And there were just so many. 
I don't even want to say bloopers because they weren't funny. We were so tired. <laughs> but <laughs> there were so many little flubs that were happening. Um, but that was definitely a fun one. The freestyle was pretty great. I, I think the one at the very, very end uh, where we're the both fusion? in gold. Yeah, the fusion one. Something about that, like watching week one versus week 11 mm. and comparing bar and dancing of how I did it. It just, it seemed so natural during the fusion. That's that's all Val. I, I'm really appreciative of that. He's an amazing human being. I've never met him, but he seems to be an amazing person. Incredible human. Big heart. Oh, yeah. yeah. Do you keep in touch with anyone from Dancing with the Stars? Val. <laughs> yeah. Were you at her, yeah. uh, him and Jenna's wedding? Yeah. Yeah, that was, a f oh my gosh, that was so much fun. And and it was nice being able to see all the dancers as well um, who were on my season. Those are, we're like social media buddies. We'll reach yeah. out every so often. But Val is someone where every couple months or every couple weeks we'll check in and be like, hello, my yeah. mom misses you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I will confess that before you came out here, I was sitting and watching Lindsay and Sage on my Instagram. Nice. Oh my gosh. Literally so adorable. Oh, I love that child. Love that child. So in terms of speaking and publicly and your mental health, which you've been very open about over the past couple of years, did you ha always want to share your mental health story with the community and with the world? Or did you feel like you sort of had to because you're in the public eye? A little bit of both. Um, there was a part of me that didn't want to share anything because it was like, it was a little bit nerve wracking. There's this I, I had the underlying fear of, like, what if this is actually, you know, it, it may feel like a really big deal to me, but then as soon as it's verbalized, it's actually something very small, or mm -hmm. I know people have it worse, or, that, you know, I, I was doing the whole, like, what if type spiral, and at the end of the day, people go through what they go through, and I, you know, the older I got, the more I realized the weight of everything that I had gone through growing up, of being in a not-so-good environment as a, as a kid, and learning what that means and how that affects me now. Um, and the more I talked about it, the more it dove just into mental health, what that meant for me in my own personal life, and then also what it meant for interviews. They started to intertwine a little bit, and it was important. It needed to happen. I think it was also very therapeutic for me, too. Yeah. Uh, that actually is a great segue to my next question, which is, do you find speaking about your mental health journey very therapeutic? I do. Yeah, I really do. Every so often, I'll be on stage or doing an interview, and I'll be talking about my mental health, and a little nugget will pop up and it's like, ah, I did not see that before. And suddenly yeah. that is here now. Um, or like we had an interview or we, I was doing a speaking event today yeah. and during the Q and A, it was the question of, you know, for the little kids, is there any advice? And I remember thinking, cause I, I've almost said everything under the sun or so it feels like. Mm -hmm. So I always like trying to switch it up or change things. And, you know, it's wonderful to tell kids to believe in themselves. It's another thing to tell them to separate what they're doing yeah. at practice from who they are. And I do wish someone had told me that growing up. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it is really therapeutic. Oh, for sure. So you were homeschooled growing up. And after years of being homeschooled and going to the Olympics and doing all these amazing things, what was the inspiration behind you wanting to go to college and specifically NYU? Yeah, I, I thought about going to college at 18. And then I also thought about going to the next Olympics, and I thought that, okay, well, one has a time crunch. <laughs> I can only be, you know, it's not that, you know, we have athletes like Oksana Chesovina, who's 41 and still competing at the Olympics. Bestie, that's not going to be me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm kind of teetering off the done scale, <laughs> you know? Mm. So it's like, if I'm going to go again, if I was going to try for another Olympic Games, I had to do it then. Yeah. Whereas college can wait. College can come later. So right. that's exactly what happened. I tried yeah. for the games, and um, now I'm getting ready for college. And it's also, like, I love the I, I love learning. I, I do feel like I'm kind of a sponge when it comes to that. Mm -hmm. So going into a place where I'm studying something that I'm really passionate about, and yeah. I'm going to learn things that I have no idea yeah. about had I not gone, that's exciting to me. Do you start in the fall? I do. It's terrifying. Oh, yeah. I'm going to be in front of, like, people and stuff. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, before you know it, you'll be in your very own Broadway musical, I hope. I hope so. That would be pretty cool. Oh, yeah, Olympian-turned-Broadway star. Oh, man. <laughs> maybe, maybe you'll be defying gravity or jumping over the moon someday. You never know. Honestly, I sound like I'm dying when I sing that song. So, I don't know. We'll see. Maybe I'll be the dragon. they songs. Oh, you yeah. Know? I'll just be the dragon at the top. Or, ah. or you, yeah, or you can, you know, be Glinda and be like popular and yeah. do all the leaping and the jumping. The leaping was something that I laughed so hard at because I saw Wicked about two weeks ago. Oh. Um, and it, you know, seeing Glinda do these like 
really awkward leaps. Like, I do that <laughs> <laughs> when I'm home. If I get really excited, I'll, like, when little kids do the, like, grunt, and then they squat, and then they're uncomfortable. And, like, <laughs> and then yeah. they jump, and it's awful. It is the <laughs> most awful leap or jump I've ever done. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, that was so great, sweetie. No, it wasn't. <laughs> I love it. I love it so much. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, that show is just everything and everything and more. And what are you most looking forward to when you begin college? What I'm most looking forward to, honestly, I am someone who feels, I just booped my chin on the mic. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> that was a really weird feeling. <laughs> um, I, I'm someone who has so many big feelings. I do feel like I'm a pretty sensitive person. Um, which is also why outing is so appealing to me. It means that I'm going to get to exercise all of that. Like this is a place where the entire point is to show a feeling and I don't like suppressing my feelings. It doesn't make me feel good. And I also think it would be very therapeutic for me to understand like, what does anger look like for me? Cause I'm going to have to do it on screen. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm I'm excited for the journey. I'm probably going to get roasted a couple times, but that's okay. That's kind of that's kind of how it goes. Yeah. <laughs> and my last question is, do you, does being like on a college campus like you are today, like get you even more excited to actually be like a college student yourself and, you know, living the college, you know, life world? It does. It's a little bit nerve wracking because, you know, sometimes I will go on down the street or something and I'll get recognized and, 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 and it's fun, but I'm also very small and always quite scared. Mm-hmm. Um, love anxiety. And yeah. so there's a little part of me that's a bit nervous to walk around campus, but I think if it's pretty chill and I can make a couple friends, all will be good in the world. Oh, yeah. I see <laughs> nothing but amazing things <laughs> coming he- and heading your way when you start school Thank and in you. the future. Once again, I am Jamie Starr talking with Olympic gold medalist and season 23 champion of Dancing with the Stars, Lori Hernandez. Thanks for having me. Thank you.